Hey, welcome guys. I'm talking about acids and bases today. So it's unfortunate that we're, we're missing school right now because acids and bases, this, this, this chunk tends to be the most fun stuff to do in the lab. So I'm trying to mirror that in your at home experience. Um, like, like I said in the lab intro, I'm a little bit nervous about this though. Uh, these things like these cleaners here in the middle, and here, they're going to sometimes produce noxious gases if we mix those. So I, I'm just trying to emphasize as many times as I can. On these labs, please don't use cleaners uh, because we. I, I, the last thing I want is for you to get hurt mixing cleaners. So mix foods, mix soaps, things like that. Don't mix cleaners. So I want to talk about some examples of acids and bases. Uh, before I get into that, though, I downloaded this PowerPoint several years ago um, from someone else. So I always like to give credit where credit's due, and, and this is a presentation that I didn't build entirely myself. I've used it, I think, three or four times now, uh, so I've changed it so much that the original author may or may not even recognize it. I don't remember if it was originally pink. It doesn't really matter. Uh, like I said, I, I didn't make all of it, so somebody deserves credit. Um, on the screen, you've got a couple examples of acid uh, that you've probably you probably know about, or you're not surprised by. Uh, so that 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 taste that makes you kind of go when you bite into a lemon or a lime, or, or just, you know some people are that way with oranges. That's that that citric acid that you're tasting. That's that that taste that that acid taste. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, there's an, a formic acid that's that's kind of the venom uh, in a, a, a stinging ant's sting. Uh, aspirin is one that we've used for for a long time. Notice it's a weak acid. Um, if you stick with me next year for AP Chem, we'll need to worry about what a weak acid is versus a weak. I'm sorry, weak versus strong. The fact that this is a powder is a pretty good indicator that it is a weak acid. Uh, glycine is one of the amino acids. Amino acids make proteins. Uh, you know all about glycine, uh, probably, uh, if you did uh, the codon wheel, um, if you think back to genetics and biology one, when you were um, trans uh, transcribing uh, DNA into RNA and then translating RNA into protein. You used a wheel for that, or maybe you used a table, uh, so you would look at like AUG and that would tell you that the amino acid is methionine. And then you would work your way down uh, three letters at a time and you're gradually building your amino acid chain that develops into your protein once you start getting the levels of folding and organization and all that kind of stuff. That's a whole different topic for a different day. But don't forget, I feel like in the past, my students and, and even I as a student were very compartmentalized. So in biology, we learned about DNA and as a 14 year old freshman, we knew that that A stood for acid. As a 15 year old sophomore, when we're in Mr. Hyatt's class and we're dumping chemicals together, all of a sudden an acid is something different. And we never really make that connection between this sophomore level chemistry item and this freshman level biology item. So please, as much as possible, I want you to, to jump back to things you know. That's been the case all year. Um, but that really rears its head here frequently because people just, it's like they forget that they were, they were a freshman. So a couple more examples. My favorite, of course, you guys know this, uh, caffeine is a stimulant that's a weak base. Um, so that's one that, that we all deal with all day, every day. So, you know, some of this stuff that you learn could go towards, how can I make better coffee? How can I make different coffee? It's a base. So how can I manipulate my base to get something that I want? I want coffee all day, every day. So how can I do that? Can I make coffee not affect my blood pressure? Could I make coffee not affect me in other ways? Uh, when, when I drink too much coffee, my blood pressure goes up and my hands get sweaty. Could I, could I not do that? Could I not have sweaty palms from drinking coffee? Um, and then sea slugs there, you see, uh, move my face just a little bit so you can see it. Uh, they have a strong acid that they use in self-defense, so no, no shock there acids can be used as self-defense. Um, so I, I hope you're following along. Um, I, I apologize. I meant to say this ahead of time. Uh, I posted that notes sheet. I don't expect you to fill it out. Just take notes and answer those questions somewhere in your notes. Um, so anyway, getting back to the slide, acids have that sour taste. I mentioned that, that sour taste, uh, when you bite into a lemon or a lime, excuse me, vinegar is a great example of, of, of acid. 
It's one we, we've all worked with um, in, in our homes, probably. Um, there's a reason that you use vinegar to clean your coffee pot, to descale your coffee pot. It's a really good cleaner. It's an acid. There's a reason that apple cider vinegar is like the hippie cleaner of choice. It's an acid. It's going to interact with basic things. It's going to interact with cell membranes. It's, it's going to interact with things like an acid does. Um, hopefully you haven't tasted vinegar, but maybe you have. There, there are... I cook with vinegar quite a bit. Um, one thing that, that I, I try to bring up in this acid and base stuff is, is, is food. Because a lot of times, um, I had a phase in my life where I kind of got into cooking. I, I don't know. Um, I, I like to cook. And one of the things that I figured out, uh, sometimes recipes will call for lemons and I'm not so good at remembering to buy lemons. So what I, what I, researched, you know, I was a poor college kid when I was going through this phase. So I did a lot of like, okay, what can I substitute for this? Like I don't have baking soda. What can I substitute for this? I don't have baking powder. What can I substitute for that? Well, I didn't have a lemon. So what, what can I substitute for a lemon? And, and what I came across should have been obvious to me. All I needed from that lemon was the acid. I didn't really need to, I, I didn't want the thing I was making to be lemony. I just wanted a little bit of acid to react with a base to take away some of this bitter base taste. Uh, base taste, that's a hard thing to say. Um, my wife does something similar when she makes spaghetti. She'll put a little sprinkle of sugar into her spaghetti sauce. Worst thing I've ever made in my life. I misunderstood her directions and I put a bunch of sugar in spaghetti sauce one time. It was disgusting. I took one bite. I can eat anything. I took one bite and I threw it away. It was freaking terrible. Anyway, uh, lost my train of thought there. Uh, so she puts sugar in there. Uh, she's causing the chemical reaction because she doesn't like that bitter taste that the tomatoes have. Um, <clears throat> so she's just driving that chemistry forward. I, I have seen people that, that will sprinkle uh, lemons in things that taste nothing like lemon. All they're trying to do is neutralize the base that's in the food uh, that, that they are trying to kind of bring flavors out of. Uh, lots of implications here with acids and bases. Um, you know, someday, uh, I mentioned baking, cooking, bartending is another example where there's just tons of acids and bases, uh, coming together. There are lots of simulations with, uh, like juice bars and things like that. So th there are some examples there as well. Uh, but this is, is one of those topics that if you'll, if you'll focus it on what you can take out of it, rather than getting lost in the straight up chemistry of it, you, you can apply a ton of this to your life and, and it can make your life better in tiny little, you know, I, I'm not trying to say that knowing acids and bases is going to make you a happier person, but you know, it, it might help you make better food from time to time, you know, little things. Uh, you know, if you want to be a science person, there's, there's lots of great stuff here uh, for you too. But if, if you're not a scientist, this is one of those topics that, you know, lots of us are going to have fish tanks. Lots of us are going to have pools. Lots of us are going to uh, have to dilute cleaners down. Lots of us are going to have to do things uh, that involve acids and bases. I feel like I've been talking on this slide for like 10 minutes, so I'm going to move on. I think you probably had time to get uh, the information that you needed there. Specific to acids, uh, move my face down here so I'm not blocking the, the text. Um, we're going to have three different definitions of acids and bases. So you'll, you, we'll get to that. So this, this top point is kind of, um, if you write this down, do write that down and put a little star next to it. And we'll come back to that star once we get down to the definitions, because, um, the kind of the base definition for an acid is that it's something that creates hydrogen when you put it into water. So when it ionizes, hydrogen comes off. That, that hydrogen may bond to a water immediately, uh, but it, when it, when you drop that thing in water, hydrogen breaks off of it. Uh, tastes sour, corrodes metals, uh, they're electrolytes. So uh, maybe you've heard of electrolytes. That's really popular in things like Gatorade and sports drinks. Uh, electrolytes carry charge and they carry some other things along with them. Um, what electrolytes can really help us do um, from a practical standpoint is they help us with hydration. Uh, football players sometimes, when back when we used to have two-a-days, <clears throat> and, and professional football players and, and college football players still do this a lot, um, like when, when an athlete is really, really uh, overexerting themselves, like so, like I said, two-a-days in football, you've got 
two two hour practices in in the heat so you're you're expending a ton of energy and you're sweating like crazy it's really common to drink uh, this stuff called Pedialyte that's for you know it's PD um, so it's for babies um, sometimes babies get dehydrated as well and those electrolytes work with your cell membranes to bring water into your cell membrane so you can hydrate your cells so um, acids can can act as electrolytes um, pH is less than seven that's going to be huge later uh, and then litmus paper we would worry about that if we were in class we're not so we won't okay next step Nomenclature. What, how do we name these acids? If, if I get HCl, how do I know what to call it? Or if I see uh, sulfurous acid, what is that? How do I know what that is from based upon the words? So notice that we're going to name these acids on uh, based upon the anion. So if we don't have any oxygen in the anion, we're going to call it hydro something ic acid. So if we had HF, for example, was our compound, HF. The F is the anion, so that would be fluoride. So that's there's no oxygen, so that's an ide. So I would call that hydrofluoric acid, hydrofluoric acid, HF. Things that have oxygen in them will end in ates and ites. So think sulfate, sulfite, nitrate, nitrite. So it, let's let's use nitrogen. If I have nitrate, I have to know what that anion is. I might need to look it up whether it's NO3, NO4, NO2, NO12. So if I have nitrate, I have nitric acid. If I have nitrite, I have nitrous acid. Different properties. It's important. It matters which one you have. One is going to be stronger than the other. They'll have different properties. <clears throat> Stupid mnemonic device to help. Uh, so the ide and hydroic should be, like that's a pretty easy one because it's just, if it's this, then it's that. But with the oxygen, you got to remember, is it ick or is it us? And like I said, their stupid mnemonic device in the cafeteria, you ate something icky. I don't remember where I heard that. I can't, maybe Mr. Van Tilburg, I don't know. Some, somebody a long, long time ago told me that. So <clears throat> uh, let's look at the, the nomenclature, just a couple of examples, uh, and then uh, I'll give you some, some to practice. So uh, the first one there, HBR, follows the same pattern uh, that I just talked to with HF. So that would be hydrobromic acid. No oxygen. The anion is bromide, so hydrobromic acid. Uh, H2CO3, that's carbonate CO3. So that's an 8, so that's going to be carbonic acid. SO3 is nitrite. I'm sorry, <laughs> sulfite, not nitrite. Sulfite, so that's going to be sulfurous acid. So you're about to see the first of those weird slides that I mentioned. Um, that's to remind me to insert some questions for you to answer. Um, I'm going to have you practice some of these uh, nomenclature reviews, and then uh, we'll move on from there. Okay, so uh, hopefully that went well, and now we're going to talk bases really quickly. I'm going to try to run through this as fast as I can. So you see the properties of bases. Big thing is uh, that they produce hydroxide, or OH, in water. So that's kind of our base definition. And then you see some properties there. Uh, pH greater than 7 is going to be huge later. Um, but th that's kind of the basic properties of a base. So uh, common bases um, that you'll come across. NaOH is one that we've used a ton. Uh, that's sodium hydroxide. You find that in, in lye, which is a really strong cleaner. Uh, potassium hydroxide. You see all, all of those are there. Stabilizers for plastics, liquid soaps. Uh, milk of magnesia, which is like if you're sick, you, you take that and it settles your stomach, I think. Uh, malox is an antacid, so if you have heartburn, you have, it's an antacid, it's an anti-acid. So you have heartburn, you, you, you take an antacid, there's an acid-base reaction somewhere here in your chest and your heartburn uh, starts to go away. So I'm going to leave off there for this video. Um, there is going to be a second video that talks about the definitions of acids and bases, and it's huge. Please, 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 please watch it. So the next topic is the definitions of these acids and bases, and I've been kind of sprinkling this in all year long. So you guys have heard a little bit of this, um, but we're finally getting to kind of formally defining what an acid and a base is. So um, there, there, like I said, there are three. So the traditional definition of an acid and a base uh, follow this scientist's name right here. So I am confident that I mispronounced this name, 
uh, Arrhenius is the way that I was told to say it, Arrhenius. So I, I don't know if that's correct or not. So uh, Arrhenius acid is one that produces uh, an NH+. That's the definition I gave earlier. So this is kind of like the standard definition of an acid and a base. Acids uh, produce hydrogen ions. Bases produce hydroxide ions. Uh, you see there on the screen that the problem is not all bases have hydroxide ions. So this definition of a base doesn't fit all bases. So we need multiple definitions. So if a base has hydroxide, then it can release them. So Okay, so that's a base. But there are other things that act basic but don't have hydroxide ions. So we have to expand our definition. This was kind of a classical definition. So um, an Arrhenius acid is a substance that produces hydrogen and water. Like I said on the last screen, you see that kind of shown with uh, the ball and stick model here. So we've got our HCl, got our water. Uh, this H3O has now gained a hydrogen and the chlorine has lost a hydrogen. So over here, this would be our acid. This would be our base. Uh, we'll get to what we call these things here in just a minute. Another example, NH3, H2O. Uh, NH3 is gaining a hydrogen. H2O is becoming hydroxide. Let me move my face again. Yeah, is becoming hydroxide. So um, again, uh, gaining an, uh, a hydrogen, losing a hydrogen here. This losing a hydrogen would make this an acid, would make this a base. So water uh, can act as both an acid and a base. It's neutral. It's one of the many things that makes it special. Sorry about messing with my hat. Um, definition two, Bronsted Lowry. So maybe there's not hydrogen. Maybe there's not hydroxide. But maybe we can look at protons. So acids maybe donate protons instead of hydrogens. Bases accept protons instead of just hydrogens. So that takes care of that issue we had on the last slide or two slides ago. Don't have to have a hydrogen, just have to have a proton. Notice here that we're calling a proton a hydrogen atom that's lost its electron. So we've, we've kind of given ourselves some gray area with the base. Proton is still probably donating a hydrogen. I'm sorry, acid is still probably donating a hydrogen. Uh, so here we've, we've got some a little bit more information on this second reaction from the, the last screen. So we've got our base and we've got our acid. I figured that out because the hydrogen donates, I'm sorry, the water loses or donates a hydrogen. Because in the products over here, I've got OH. Over here, I had H2O. So I had two H's sticking off of this O. Now I only have one. So that makes this the acid. So let's focus on the water and the hydroxide for a second. Let me just get rid of my face. I think my face is gone now. If it's not, sorry. Um, so specific here and here. The acid donated the hydrogen. The thing that's left is called the conjugate base. Over here, the base accepted a hydrogen. Notice in, in, in the um, products here, we've got NH4 where we had NH3. So the base is paired with the conjugate acid. I've got another slide later that, that I'll reinforce this. I just wanted to show you that these two things are paired up. And this is huge because of this right here. This is the key, this little double arrow. Because this reaction could go back that way. And if the reaction goes back that way, this acts as an acid, this acts as a base, following our definitions. So uh, again, I'll come back to that here in just a second. Um, kind of talked through this, didn't give it the exact uh, nomenclature, but I, I recreated our conjugate acid, conjugate bases. Um, different reaction here. Uh, no, that's the same reaction. There should be, uh, this just has the OH removed. So we've lost even more. So they've donated two hydrogens. Uh, so I, I honestly, I think that was just a typo. So d don't stress about that. Um, okay, so here's the slide that talks the conjugate pairs. And I think my face is still hidden so you can see it all. Uh, I'll slide down just in case. So um, different reaction. We've got carbonate here um, and water and H3O plus, which is hydronium. And then this carbonate uh, base. 
So again, we've got things paired up. Over here, the HCO3- minus is an acid because it's losing an electron. It's donating an electron to the H3O+. Plus. So since this thing and this thing look the same, except no H over here, they're paired up. <clears throat> Excuse me, they're paired up. They're called a conjugate pair. Acid, base. Over here, base, acid. So again, uh, they're just paired up. It's, it's which two species in the equation um, are most related, if that makes sense. Okay, so um, I was going to have you guys label this. I, I originally had this as a Nearpod, um, but I, I, I don't think I'm going to have you guys answer any questions or anything like that. I, I just think that um, just let's just look at them and talk about them for a second. So our hydrogen here, our HCl, becomes Cl minus. So it donates a hydrogen, so it's an acid. Hydroxide is a base because it gains a hydrogen over here. So acid, base, conjugate base, conjugate acid. So work your way through this one. See if this one makes any sense. If you, if you have questions, please let me know. I'm going to skip down a couple of slides because we've got one last definition, and that's Lewis acids and bases. Uh, so a Lewis acid accepts an electron pair. The Lewis base donates an electron pair. So this is probably the least important of the three. That's why I listed it number three. Uh, but it does come up in very specific places, and there, there are spots where you just you won't be able to figure out what the heck's going on uh, unless you look at the electrons. So you see here uh, form the formation of the hydronium ion that, that you've seen in a couple of different uh, couple of different videos. Let me bring my face back, I think. So here we've got H plus and our water. Uh, the the I'm sorry, the electrons are moving around, moving around, right? They're making a bond. So these two electrons went from here to here. So the base is donating the electrons. The acid is accepting them. We're not talking about an ionic bond here. We're not talking about shipping electrons over. We're talking about forming a bond. So this this is enough. This isn't trading like we saw. Let me let me shift up. We're, we're not removing a hydrogen. We don't see it in the equation necessarily unless it's a charge change. We could see a charge change. Um, but we're going to see bonds form. So. I guess what I'm trying to get at with the Lewis uh, definitions of acids and bases is when the smell test fails. Like when, when you look at it and you're like, this this doesn't look like either of these two definitions. It's probably something to do with Lewis. It's probably electrons moving around. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm, I've got just one more topic to cover quickly, uh, but I wanted to include this because Lewis acids and bases are really big in biology, and I know we've got a lot of biology folks in the, in the group. I know we've got some pre-med folks and things along those lines. So um, that's why I wanted to spend some time on Lewis acids and bases. You see uh, hemoglobin, the, the way we carry our oxygen around, um, is, is really heavily dependent upon uh, Lewis acids and bases. So quickly. Let's talk pH. pH is how we express, how we measure, how acidic, how basic something is. So just kind of a, a, a rough summary. Things that have a high pH up to 14, those are going to be bases. Things that have a low pH down to zero are acids. Things in the middle are neutral. That's kind of the, the base. Now, there's some math involved in pH. I'm not going to ask you guys to do much of the math at all. Um, if you're a, a, an AP student next year, we're going to have to really hammer this stuff home, um, but we'll get to it. So uh, some, just some common substances that you see there. Vinegar is around three. Uh, soda tends to be around three. Oranges tend to be around four. Blood is, uh, is not exactly neutral. Um, it's slightly basic, like seven, 7.5. I can't see what's on the screen right there. The text is really small. I think that says 7.4. Um, so just, just, just slightly basic. Uh, and then cleaners tend to be the things that are really basic. So like ammonia and oven cleaner and things like that. Um, this is the one sort of formula that we do need to be able to use. Um, I, I'm not going to attempt to teach you what a logarithm is. Uh, for us, it's a button on your calculator. Your math teacher can teach you what log is. They'll do a be lot better job of it than I will. So to calculate the pH, 
we take the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So here's an example of that. We've got a hydrogen ion concentration of 1 times 10 to the negative 10th, really small. We take the negative log of that and we get our pH to be 10. So um, it, it's really easy on the calculator. You just hit negative sign log and then you would, I pointed at the screen, dummy, and then you would put that in there. Now here's another example. I've got a couple of examples. Again, I'm not going to ask you guys to do this in this presentation, uh, but I do want you to, to understand how to do it um, because it may help with the um, red cabbage chemistry lab. Um, this is probably also new. You, maybe you haven't done anti-log. You need to find that button. It's It looks like this, 10 to the X. Um, so then this is kind of solving for the, the H plus, so we're going the opposite way. So we've got our pH, see, here's our equation. We've got our pH and we want to solve for the H plus. So, you know, think about in algebra, we would, if this was just a number, we would divide this. Well, we're not, it's not a number, it's a log. So to do the opposite of a log, that's called an anti-log. And that's that 10 to the X button. Um, so those are just the variations of calculations that, that you could uh, you could see. Here's one uh, that demonstrates that last uh, component. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Two more slides to get through. So that was POH. I'm sorry, that was pH. POH is really similar, but it's, notice in the middle there, it's not, it, it's not real. It's something that we come up with um, to make things easier because assigning a pH to a base is really, really tricky. I, I'm not going to push you through the math of it, but it sucks. It, it, it's hard math to do. So um, the pOH is going to look at it from the perspective of the base. So we'll take our OH concentration and we'll negative log that, and that will give us our pOH. Most of the time, this is the key right here, this equation. So if I can find my pH and I need to know what the pOH is, I just take 14 minus that. Or if I can find the pOH and I need to know what the pH is, negative log this, 14 minus it. That's, that's the, the most common uh, application of pH and pOH. It'll be really rare for me to ask you or for any test writer to say, here's, some, here's a bunch of numbers, calculate pH, calculate pOH, add them up, make sure they, they reach 14. Certainly you could do that. I wouldn't. I don't see any purpose in that. Um, wanted to give you a couple of examples. Um, so here, here's one worked out. You see P, pOH, and then they used that, that last equation I referenced to figure out the pH. So um, it's a way to take incomplete data and get a lot more information. Don't worry about this KW thing. That's an AP topic. We'll get to that. There are um, two slides worth of practice problems here. Again, don't expect you to do it don't expect you to do them, but I know that some of you guys are math people and math, seeing the numbers worked out makes this stuff click. So I wanted to provide a couple of examples. Um, I have the answer keys for these somewhere. I haven't posted them yet. If you want them, let me know and I, I can shoot it over to you uh, whenever. So then this is the last, uh, kind of last three questions um, that some of these you may not be able to answer because I cut out I think I cut out 30 slides of this lecture um, to really kind of streamline it. So if something seems like like uh, I cut out dilutions, I know I cut out dilutions. So that one you probably, you can do part of it. Looking at it, you can do part of it. So like I said, take a look at them. Uh, I, I miss you guys. I, I hope you're having fun with these labs. I hope the next couple of labs are more fun. Um, but stay safe and I will see you guys soon.